The 2009 ice melt season has just been completed at the northern polar cap, and observations confirm that the decay of the Arctic Ocean ice cover is continuing a steady decline. The last three melt seasons represent the three lowest summer ice areas in the satellite record. Satellite measurements of total summer ice surface have been on a downward slope for three decades. In 2007, ice area suffered a spectacular and unpredicted slump. In the last two years, summer expanse rebounded from the catastrophic collapse to a merely precipitous slope of decline. Unsurprisingly, the climate denial media machine cranked up a chorus of misleading headlines, incorrect interpretations, and bonehead conspiracy theories. Regular viewers of this series will know that as impressive as the lost area of ice is, even more important is loss of ice mass. In this animation, the oldest, thickest ice, the perennial ice, is colored red. And over the last three decades of freeze and thaw, the amount of ice that survives more than one or two seasons has declined dramatically. Colored green on this series of maps, the area of perennial ice has continued to steadily decline from its 1981 to 2000 average. This steady loss of mass is a key indicator for ice sheet scientists. This fall, the National Snow and Ice Data Center noted only 19% of the ice cover was over two years old the least in the satellite record and far below the 1981 to 2000 average of 52 percent. But satellite data is no substitute for boots on the ground, hands-on measurements. This past summer a scientific expedition crossed hundreds of miles of ice cap to double check the remote sensing systems. The three explorers conducted a survey along their journey, repeatedly drilling through the ice to determine its depth and age. You can't but be seriously concerned at, at the findings that come out of our very detailed survey. Uh, Team leader Penn Haddo says the results were surprising. The sea ice they travelled over and drilled through was not as old or thick as they'd expected. We had broadly been led to believe that um, we could expect to see a good proportion of our total journey distance um, involving this multi-year old thicker ice. Actually there was none. None at all. Instead the team found the average depth of ice was less than two meters or six feet. It was all young thin ice that will melt during summer. Scientists at Cambridge University say this survey shows the area of Arctic sea ice which melts seasonally is bigger than had been believed and is expanding rapidly. As this 2008 interview with National Snow and Ice Data Center scientist Walt Meyer shows, this result should not have been a surprise. And the ice is getting much thinner and so we have much less total volume of ice and we're heading towards a point in the not too distant future, probably within a generation, of having no sea ice during the summer um, and that's a dramatic change in the climate. At the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, cryosphere experts have pieced together the downward spiral that polar ice has entered. Now, something you need to understand too is that that ice is dynamic. Every winter it grows and continues out, and then every summer it melts back. The reason people are concerned right now is that in the past few years, we've seen a dramatic summer melting that takes the ice back to a point that's far, far, far smaller than we've ever seen it before. And in 2009, we set the stage for another year of this continued melting and reaching what are near record lows. Data comes not just from above the ice, but also below, as a vast library of military data has become available to researchers. Over decades, submarines have measured the Arctic ice. Here, HMS Tireless breaks through two years ago. Since the 1960s, submarines with their sonar systems have tracked how the ice has declined. Professor Peter Wadhams of Cambridge University has studied the Navy's sonar records. Yes, these are all measurements of ice thickness and taken from the sonar rolls which we digitized. There are millions of readings, 
He's amazed at how the ice is thinning. I ask how long the ice cap has left. A maximum of 20 years for the summer ice cover. The winter, there'll always be an ice cover, but it'll be thin first-year ice. Professional climate deniers are always grasping for further distortions and will often point to trends in southern hemisphere, Antarctic sea ice, as somehow canceling out northern trends. But polar scientists know that at opposite ends of the planet, different conditions apply, as NASA pointed out in a recent sea ice update. One result of such global climate change has already begun to emerge at the other end of the Earth. Summer sea ice minima in the southern hemisphere have not been declining, as warmer ocean water promotes evaporation, which creates more snow to feed the Antarctic ice fields. Conditions at the southern polar cap differ markedly from the north, but ongoing changes there could have enormous impacts on Earth systems and human civilization. We'll be talking about that in future editions of Climate Denial Croc of the Week.